everybody. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at creating joints and um, getting some of the fundamentals down of how joints work and what they are. So joints can be found in the rigging panel here, or you can change to the rigging menu set. So we can see that we have new menu here related to rigging and specifically the skeleton section. So um, we can create joints by this one, we can see the little icon is the same as this one, which if we hover over this, it should say create joints. And that allows us to create a series of joints. Um, so if I select that tool and I click in the viewport, we get a joint that is created. You'll see that if I move around and I click again, it will keep on creating joints indefinitely until I push enter and the numeric keypad to finalize it and that will finalize the joint chain that we are creating. So a joint chain is a collection of joints. It's actually multiple joints that we have created here for this skeleton. If we click on the box in the outliner here, we can see that we expand and we can actually get more and more joints visible until we get all of them showing. So we have 10 joints here. This is a really slow way to get access to all the joints. Um, and you'll see that there's a lot of joint chains with a lot of parenting and things like that. So what I like to do is be able to hold down shift on the keyboard and then click on that plus sign. And it will open all of the things, all of the children underneath it. All right, so let's get rid of that joint chain and do something a little bit more um, character based with this, at least for a shape. Um, also, something to notice is that when we're creating here in the um, 3D viewport, the skeleton, it's always going to create on the ground plane here. So just like when you're creating a primitive or any other object, if you're trying to place it directly inside of the um, 3D viewport here, it is going to place it on the ground plane, even if like visually it might look like you're placing it inside of the character once there's a character in here. Um, so that's something to be um, careful with. What you can do is go to a side or a front viewport. So like if we had in the side right here, we have the ground plane there and we can do a joint chain of something that might look like a leg. There we go. So we have the beginnings of a leg there. You'll see that we can rotate um, the different joints. Also, predominantly what we want to do is rotate, although sometimes you'll want to move them. And just like with the parenting that we saw in the previous lesson, if we move the parent here, all the children move down with it. If I move the knee, for example, all the children move be, um, below it, but the parent does not move with it. So that's something to uh, keep in mind when you're building a skeleton that um, the direction that you create the joints is going to be important. So for example, with a leg right here, where we, if we are going to be controlling it with rotations, this is probably going to be more appropriate rather than if we were to, let's get the side view. So let's say we created a joint chain here and we started backwards and went up the chain. So let's look at the 3D viewport here. Now, it will actually rotate the whole body moving up starting from the toe, which uh, a lot of times isn't the way we want to control it. There is a way that we'll go over to get inverse kinematics, so we'll be able to move it from the bottom going up, but typically we're doing moves rather than rotations in that situation. Where here we can kind of visually see a little bit easier that it makes more sense that the kinematics for something like the leg might go that way unless um, we're trying to walk and we want to bring the hips down. When we bring the hips down, we want it to like bend and that's where the inverse kinematics start coming into play. 
uh, but we'll cover that in a future lesson. And let's take a look at um, some of the interesting things that we can do with joints in this lesson while we're here. So I'm going to select my joint tool here and let's say I position my hip joint right where I want it, but um, it's creating it right in the origin. Um, the height is correct, but when we look at it here, it's right in the middle and obviously our characters are going to be split on either side so we want to make sure that we move it over that way or from the viewport from the front viewport there we go so if you want to reposition it in multiple viewports while you're creating the joint what you can do is middle mouse button drag it before you create the next joint so then you can go ahead and um, now that that's there I'm gonna go back to the side viewport I just did control Z to undo that last click but then I can go here and then we can see that it's creating it but if you're kind of got more of an A stance you can shift it a little bit then we can create the ankle shift it a little bit create the um, ball of the foot and it a little bit and the toes and then shift it a tiny bit and this will be a little bit clearer once we have a piece of geometry that we're working with here but that's the idea of how we want to be able to place joints and the reason we do that is that it helps with our um, rotations to be able to get them to be exactly the way we want without them um, being really wonky and whatnot. All right, so another thing that you want to look at with joints is, let's say we were building a spine here. So I'm going to go up this way. So we have two different joint chains, but we want them to uh, interact together. We can, um, after we've created them, create a um, connection. So I'm going to take the leg and say that the hip or the pelvis joint here is going to be the parent. So I'll parent it. And you see whenever we parent joints together, they'll create a connection here visually. So each one of these spheres are the actual um, joints or the sphere looking things. They're the actual joints. And then the parts in the bottom actually tell you the way that the parenting is connected. So we can see that the parent chain is going this way to its children and then it's also going this way to its children. Whereas this one is the child of this one so it's not pointing in the opposite direction. So that is a good thing to know when you're creating the skeleton is, is that you can start parenting multiple chains together and with this uh, joint here that we have if we expand it, we can see we have two joint chains that are connected to it and they go in opposite directions so we can pretty easily follow where we're going. And again, we can hold the shift and click on the plus and it'll expand all of its children out. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful in understanding the fundamentals of joints. And in the next lesson, we are going to take a look at using IK handles. So this will give us an opportunity to be able to uh, do what I was saying earlier where we can reverse the direction of how the joints are actually moving so we can actually move the feet and it will rotate the joints above it which right now with the rotations they are forward kinematic and when we use the IK handles they is called inverse kinematic so it's basically going in the opposite direction it's doing the inverse of what normal kinematics are with joints. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video.